egg yolk, what is going on and what is up with the Chico army who grows day by day, and of course any newbie aka a viewer of the tube. Well I'm sure you've seen the Disney reopening video, very upbeat and happy, but let's just watch this version real quick. It's not safe. I have a family. It's not safe. You know how they perform corporate executions of the public? It's time for Chico Crypto. Well, corporate America and some of its elite leaders got hit a couple days ago, hacked and a plan of attack executed during the night on Twitter. Ironically, the platform that wrongly kicked me off for using this GIF, which is embedded into their platform. Always listen to Kirk Lazarus, my friends. But I'm sure you've heard all of it already, so I'm not going to repeat the story. Although I want to look at the CEO, Jack Dorsey, and ask him why in the freak his platform is now attacking crypto. The block covered it yesterday. Twitter is now restricting posts that contain cryptocurrency addresses. Yeah, it won't allow you to tweet if you try to tweet with a crypto address, Bitcoin, Ethereum, or any other. Strings of letters and numbers is not allowed on Twitter as of right now, which makes you scratch your head. As Jack, the CEO, has been a vocal supporter of Bitcoin even just a couple months ago. I think the most beautiful thing about it is there's no one person setting the direction. Um, and there's no one person on the other side that can stop it. So we have something that is um, pretty organic in nature and very principled in its original design. Um, and uh, I, you know, I think the Bitcoin white paper is one of the most seminal works of computer science in the last 20, 30 years. Um, it's, it's poetry. It's poetry. And Twitter even recently added the BTC emoji to their platform. So WTF, what the funk is up? Well, it's corporate America which ruins everything, even a platform like Twitter, which is a product of its centralized design. And those who want crypto destroyed may be behind everything we saw over the past couple of days, months, including the fallout and me being banned from Twitter. So, Twitter is a public company. It's trading on Wall Street and ran an IPO all the way back in 2013. So, it has shareholders and a board, and that board just got crypto nasty. So, in March of this year, it was announced that an Elliott management would be buying $1 billion in Twitter, a 4% share. This article covered it. Twitter shares surge 9% as activist Elliott management buys stake pressures CEO Jack Dorsey. And the article states, Elliot has nominated four directors to Twitter's board in an attempt to fill three vacant seats at this year's annual meeting. According to reports, the New York-based fund's chief, Paul Singer, is said to be having constructive discussions with the company. And then just above, it says what they were looking to do. Elliot is pushing for change at the company, including the possible replacement of the founder, Jack Dorsey, as CEO. They were looking to boot old Jackie Boy out if he didn't play ball, which he did. The New York Times covered it. Twitter reaches deal with activist fund that wanted Jack Dorsey out. And the article says, the agreement will keep Mr. Dorsey atop Twitter, at least for now, at a crucial time for a social network. It also avoids a potentially costly fight with Elliott, the $40 billion hedge fund that has successfully shaken up many corporate boardrooms. Shake it up, baby, now, shake it up, baby. Yeah, Elliott Management, let's find out who these guys are. Well, it was founded by Paul Singer, billionaire, active Republican supporter, as a top source of funds for the National Republican Senatorial Committee, who hates raising taxes on the wealthy and opposes the Dodd-Frank Act. It's a political fund group who invests to get their way. Now to understand what their way is, we need to go back to the deal that was reached with Twitter to keep Jack as a CEO. The Hollywood Reporter covered it too in an article titled Twitter Inc's $1 billion investment deal with Elliott Management, Silver Lake. What, another company? 
from the article. Twitter has reached a settlement with activist investor Elliott Management. That includes tech investor Silver Lake taking a one billion stake in the social media giant and co-founder and CEO Jack Dorsey remaining at the helm, at least for now. Twitter also inked a cooperation agreement with Elliott Management that will see Silver Lake's investment together with cash on hand fund a two billion share repurchase program. So not only did Elliott get their way, they brought on another VC fund tech investor, Silver Lake, which if you're a longtime fan of Chico Crypto, we know who Silver Lake is and what their motive is, take out Bitcoin. To find out why, let's just see who is Silver Lake's co-founder. Using Crunchbase, we can see it is Glenn Hutchins. And from his profile, it says, Glenn Hutchins is a co-founder of Silver Lake, the global leader in technology investing. He is a director of both AT&T and NASDAQ Inc. and a director of the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. Which, going to the Fed's website, yes, there he is. One of the most powerful people of the old system, based on USD. So Silver Lake, what's up with them in crypto? They just got a share in Twitter, Tyler. So explaining this web would take an entire another video, but luckily I've already done that. So if you want the full picture, watch this video, posted almost two years ago, December 2018. But this is how it goes, a quick version. Silver Lake and Glenn back a major crypto player, digital currency group DGC, led by Barry Silver. Going to their team page, we can see Glenn is on the board of directors. Now, DGC owns the Grayscale Bitcoin Investment Trust, which is stacking in a stack in BTC, purchasing more Bitcoin last month than that were mined, which puts Grayscale total BTC at nearly 400K, basically 2% of the total supply. Now, Digital Currency Group is intertwined with many companies besides Silver Lake and thus the New York Fed, NASDAQ, MasterCard, many crypto techs and projects, Coinbase, and more. Those deep connections alone are pretty suspicious, but there is one not mentioned, and it's a nasty one. Going to their current portfolio, we can see they're invested in, wait for it, Blockstream, which Coindesk covered their investment back in 2016. Blockstream raises $55 million to build out Bitcoin's blockchain, which Barry Silbert, founder of DGC, retweeted, saying, thrilled to invest in Blockstream alongside a fantastic group of forward-thinking global investors. And Blockstream, they can be blamed for what has happened to Bitcoin. Their lightning network is a failure for scaling. So not only did Blockstream's scaling plan for Bitcoin halt Bitcoin adoption, it also nullified all adoption at this point because merchants now need to adopt lightning, which is taking forever. 18 months away for the last six years with no end in sight. And Blockstream, they are a part of something even more nasty. Decrypt covered it. Blockstream Bitfinex's staunchest defender partners with Bitfinex. And yes, Bitfinex integrated Blockstream's liquid crap sidechain. So they integrated tech. That doesn't mean they are tied together. Well, no, you can't find evidence, written evidence, that Bitfinex has invested in Blockstream, as in the document you know, but you can get evidence from a 2017 chat with their former public face, Zane Tackett, of which the guy Bitfinex captured. Let's listen in. Can you tell us something User, about your, your financial position? Like, and what other, what other things does Phoenix own, for example? Uh, we have investments in Blockstream, um, Shapeshift, NetKey, and Tether. Now, let's just wrap up what I think is going on. The war against Bitcoin is coming. The YouTube scam ads. Now Twitter gets hit with a similar thing, but by hacked accounts of celebrities. Like if you were an elite hacker and got a hold of those accounts, Elon Musk, Joe Biden, Bill Gates, wouldn't you use it for something better? Like the total amount they got is just over $118,000. It doesn't make sense. My guess is this was planned by who else? Elliot and Sil Silver Lake. They got on the board, they got Jack where they want him, and the narrative is being written as we speak. They are bashing crypto now on the Twitter platform, nullifying its reach. And guess what day I was banned from Twitter for using that GIF? March 11th, as seen from my Instagram post. So I was seriously critical of Silver Lake, Blockstream, DGC, Tether, and more on Twitter and YouTube at that time. Thus, Elliot said, take him off, as Elliot finalized their deal on March 9th. I caught you suckers. Hope you're watching. Cheers. I'll see you next time. Don't kill me.